Oh, hey friends, I'm Micah, and this is the uh, Homestead Bandwagon. Is there a title screen here? So a tractor, in its essence, is a utility tool, and you attach other utility tools to it. Now, when you buy a tractor, let's say it's your first one, maybe it's your fifth one, maybe it's your hundredth tractor, um, oftentimes you have jobs in mind for that tractor. But let's just say you just want to get a tractor and figure out the jobs you're going to do later. And you want to figure out the three most useful things you can buy right off the bat that'll give you the most bang for your buck. You know, maybe you're on a budget. We want to start with a couple tools and add later. That's great. So, you know, maybe you don't want to MacGyver everything. You know, maybe you don't, don't have a, a nice mullet like me, but you want to MacGyver some stuff. Uh, these are tools that will help you in that endeavor to get more utility out of your utility machine. So that's what we're going to do here. If you just bought a tractor and you could only get three tools, what are the three tools you should buy first? We'll go with something that goes on the front, something that goes on the rear, and then a big super surprise tool or attachment. I'm not going to show my hand yet that I think everybody needs for their tractor. So let's get with it, starting with the front. Okay, so here we are on the front of the tractor. We got our loader. Everybody gets a bucket with their loader. We're not gonna take the easy way out and say, oh, you should get a bucket with your loader. Yeah, there's, there's your clickbait for the day. No, these are pallet forks on the front of the tractor. I think they are bar none the most useful tool. If you could only buy one tool for the front of your tractor, this would be it. I use my forks more than the bucket on the tractor because they're so useful. Uh, and sometimes I get new new tractor owners or buyers who are, who are asking me, well, why are they so useful? Well, it's because once you put them on your tractor, you'll start noticing that you put them on more and more and more for more tasks, right? They're not just for lifting pallets, but it is handy for that. You can palletize a lot of stuff. You know, I went down to the hardware store and I bought 31 bags of concrete. Now, instead of hand loading and unloading, I asked them, can we just palletize those, put them in the back of the truck? I got home, slipped the forks under, lifted those bags of concrete on the pallet, drove them to where I was going to use them, and I was done. No backache. I can I can keep being fat and happy. So that's the one thing you can do with pallet forks. But there's more things you can do with them. Um, now these are a skid steer style pallet fork, so there is an opening here. Some have an enclosed back. I like having an opening because I can see what I'm doing, but I feel like it gives me more attachment point options. I can chain things to here. I can attach straps. There's cleats on the side. I've seen people use these as working platforms. Don't recommend that. That's dangerous, but hey, that's what happens when you get these pallet forks. You can start getting dumb ideas. I've used my forks. There's another video you can see on the channel that I was using these as a post pounder. You know, we're turning this into a multi-tool that does lots of things. Um, when I'm moving the implements around out in the yard, guess what? I use the forks, lift my implements and move them so I can mow where the implements are sitting. Um, you know, piles of, of, of junk we found out in the blackberries. I use, use, the, use the, the forks to extricate them. You know, um, we use them for, for, for moving brush piles when I don't feel like putting a grapple on. It's a poor man's grapple. You can use them to pick up and move logs. And when we do firewood, we put the firewood in IBC totes. Guess what? Dragging them around with the forks. So once you get yourself your set of forks, you're going to notice, man, I've got so many options here. Now, um, things you want to look for on your forks, make sure they're heavy duty. If you have a loader that lifts 2,000 pounds, get forks rated for more than 2,000 pounds. Okay, we don't want to just go to the limit. You want to go a little, little bit beyond because you're going to do something dumb. You're just going to. Um, you want to make sure these are adjustable. These can move side to side. They're not hydraulic. It's just manual. You, you lift a pin and, and lift these and move them. That's handy. Um, you know, make sure maybe you have a couple attachment points. Make sure the welds are strong. Make sure the metal looks thick. You know, if you grab these things and move them, it, it, does the metal feel like it's bending? I hope not. Um, and if you get a chance, get these skid steer style pallet forks that go on the quick attach on the front of your tractor. I wouldn't really recommend the pin on or, or, or bolt on or whatever you call them, pallet forks that just pin onto the bucket, unless you have a subcompact tractor. And in that case, you don't have that much power. You're probably not gonna bend your bucket with the pin on ones, getting, getting that rocking action on them. But yeah, 
get stronger ones than you think you need so you never have to worry about putting them in the ground and accidentally bending them because your tractor weighs so much and it can push with so much force uh, be careful of course you know understand the limits of your tractor my tractor is rated at 2600 pounds at the pin for lifting so when i was lifting the concrete i had 1950 pounds of concrete including the the big pallet this guy could lift them <laughs> about an inch off the back of the truck and that was it and then i could drive to where i was going and drop them so the farther you get from your pins the less weight you can lift so yeah when you get a big pallet out here you're gonna lose a substantial amount of lift because you're putting that weight so far out the front so just be aware of that if you're thinking of using your tractor like a forklift maybe consider consider um going for a larger tractor because you're going to find heavy things to move and be frustrated if you're not able to move them so yeah that's what you can do you can use them to replace your your, uh, your grapple if you can't afford a grapple get a get a set of forks you can use them to move stuff around the property you can use them to do t-post pounding you can use them as a work work platform uh, we made our chicken coop there's a video on that we made our chicken coop so we can pick them up with the forks and move the chicken coop from place to place i just keep finding more and more useful things to do with this thing even just you know when we're out nailing boards up or something you can lay the boards across here and they're easy to access um easier i think than putting them in the bucket which has sides on it so it limits this the, the size of your boards so just as an overall utility um, the forks are probably my favorite tool my customers who buy them tell me again and again and again boy that's my favorite tool i've ever bought so there you go forks on a tractor um, that's my first attachment i think everybody should buy for their tractor let's go to the rear we'll look at the next one on the back of your tractor there are so many different implements you can put on there but i think if you could only buy one you should buy a box blade um you know i, I love a brush cutter i love a tiller um i don't really like landscape rakes but some people like them i like snow throwers you know i, I love just about every implement you can put on the back of a tractor but the box blade is the one i have on the tractor the most bar none all the time and there's a lot of reasons for that um, we'll start with these scarifiers these teeth right so these things have so many uses you can dig furrows in the ground i've used them when i didn't feel like putting the tiller on to, to break earth right so we could till up the ground with them um, i've used them to pull stuff out of the ground there's a video of that early on on the channel where we're pulling cement uh cement footings out of the ground just using these scarifier teeth that's why they're all bent yeah, they're a tool though we'll use them like a tool so i just find that even just these scarifier teeth are extremely useful extremely adaptable the box blade itself you can use it to cut the earth and drag the earth to another place with you you can use it to you know spread material you know that's what people use box blades for the back if you're gentle and going in reverse you can use as like a bulldozer i've seen people push snow with their box blades um, and then another great thing about these things is the ballast they provide. There's a lot of weight here, but it doesn't stick out very far. So I am always having this on the back of the tractor because if we're using the loader, um, I don't want to be in danger of tipping. So the more weight I have on the back, the better. So we keep the box blade on the back. It acts like a ballast box. Um, I don't really see a reason to buy a ballast box if you have a box blade. You know, if you've got a gravel driveway, great. If you don't, I'm sure you're going to go around your property with your tractor anyway and go, oh, you know, that, that lump over there bothers me. I wish it was gone. Guess what? Box blade, knock that lump out. Or, man, I keep stepping through this deep hole. I wish I wasn't doing that. You get yourself a, a this thing on the back. You go find a high spot, move it to the low spot, and you have a nice smooth transition up a hill without big potholes through it. So... This really helps you shape the land the way you want it. Um, and it can, again, help a lot with other, other tasks. I've seen people on the back here put tow hitches so they can pull their boat around. Um, just a great adaptable, adaptable tool um, that the more you use it, the more uses you will find for it. Um, if you have welding skills, boy, you can weld tool holders on these, all sorts of stuff. So it's just your all around companion on the back of the tractor most of the time. And, you know, this box blade has saved my butt before. When I was lifting concrete with, with the forks, you know, I was a little overweight. Uh, well, I'm overweight, but the tractor was a little over its weight capacity. 
you know, could barely lift those those sacks. And when I went to go lay them down at their destination, the hydraulics released faster than I thought, and the whole tractor tipped forward. This box blade gave me enough weight to bring me back down to earth. So, you know, I wasn't embarrassed with the tractor tipped over on its front, and I also didn't get hurt. So, something to think about. Um, you know, you're going to use this thing on your property anyway if you've got property. Um, you know, neighbors love it if you can come over and help them with their driveway or something. You know, maybe your neighbor will, will, will make you dinner for going out there and working for two hours. Nothing wrong with being friendly to the neighbors. Um, just seems like a great overall tool if you were just going to have one tool on the back of the tractor. I feel like this is the one that can do the most. I mean, you can even go out and do brush clearing with it. It takes time. But using his teeth and the blade, you can go out there and, 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 and bust blackberries, salmon berries, kudzu, whatever. You can go out there and bust it with this. It's not going to be fast, but if you can only get one implement, here you go. This is the one that can take the place of a lot of other tools. All right, so now we're going to look at my big surprise. For the third attachment, I think every tractor owner should get. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, so what's my big surprise for the third attachment I think every tractor owner should buy? Well, it's this canopy. Um, I think uh, a tractor owner should have protection from the elements beyond a cap, especially if you're bald like me, goodness gracious. Um, and this provides it. We want a canopy that's long enough and wide enough to cover the tractor and operator station. Ideally, everybody would buy a cab tractor but they're expensive so if you can get a cab tractor it's in your budget buy it don't hesitate you'll never regret having heat and air conditioning so you can work year round and get the jobs done when you have the time to do them but if that's not in the cards the canopy is the way to go i recommend something waterproof okay because you want to work in the rain something hard I've had one of these save my save my save my save my noggin. I had a branch come down, hit hit the top of this thing, saved me from getting hit by a branch. Branch exploded everywhere. Probably would have knocked me out or killed me. My canopy saved me. You also want something that the sun can't get through and cook you. I don't know what's worse, being cold or hot, but I can say heat stroke is not something I want to die of when I'm on the back of my tractor out in the back 40 mowing the field. If you got this little canopy, it makes a huge amount of difference for a small amount of money. This one cost me something like 550 bucks. Plus there's utility value. There's bars here holding it up. Um, I run my lines for, for some lights on these things. Um, I've got little magnetic mirrors hanging up here so I can pay attention to my surroundings a little better. Um, I've you know attached ropes around here. You can attach tools to these guys. It just gives you a little bit extra room to work with. Um, and put on extra convenience options as you go. They make your life a lot easier. And being protected from the elements when you're out working eight, 10, 12 hours, even two hours is really important. There's nothing tough about sitting under the, the, the sun for days and days and days getting skin cancer. Nothing tough about that. You're not John Wayne. <laughs> and there's no reason to be miserable in the Pacific Northwest getting rained on you know, while you're trying to clear out a ditch with your box blade that's backed up and flooding out your front yard. I've been there. So there you have it. Uh, I think that of, of, of the three things every, every tractor owner should buy, a canopy is top of the list. Um, if you disagree, let me know. I, I'm right, but you can still let me know if you disagree. <laughs> top three tools everybody needs. A good set of pallet forks, a box blade, one of the most useful tools you can put on the rear end of a tractor of all times, and, and a canopy or, or a cab, if you can afford it, some sort of weather shelter. So feel free to tell me how wrong I am in the comments or how right I am. If somebody really impresses me with how, how right I am, maybe I'll send you a hat or something in the mail. I like hats. So, <laughs> impress me with how much you're impressed by me, <laughs> and I'll, maybe I'll send you something cool. Okay, well, I gotta go do a dump run. I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta go do some grading. I have to move a 
some chicken fence. I got a lot of stuff to do. So why don't you guys get out of here, go do your own work. Um, and, uh, <laughs> we'll do another video soon. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, um, and th thanks. Thanks for, thanks for watching. We'll see ya.